center. Dr. Burgess, please. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here and I want to thank you all the, the organizer for inviting me and especially Rajiv and uh, Anu for uh, the efficient organization. So uh, I will talk uh, about uh, the French Plant Genomic Center and uh, how we can uh, use in fact all the facilities that we uh, have in the lab uh, to help you in developing your uh, genomic project. So uh, first let me introduce uh, the lab. I manage, which is a French plant genomic center located in the south of France. It has been uh, created based on a government decision to uh, centralize in one uh, place uh, all the genomic facilities for uh, the scientific community, but not only the French community, but the international community. And we are mostly um, managing uh, bag genomic resources, and I will go into the detail later on. And this center is, in fact, a dedicated structure in order to assist all the genomic uh, programs by uh, providing uh, genomic resources at the international level and also by providing high-quality research material and efficient tools and services in order to study and to go into the detail of uh, the plant genomes to also be uh, uh, in the progress in, uh, in order to develop innovative uh, solutions and to uh, we uh, manage all these uh, projects by uh, collaborating with people or by providing services. And we also uh, host a scientist in the frame of collaboration and uh, we'll be very, very happy to welcome uh, Indian people in our lab if you want to be trained in the, all the, the tools that we have in the lab. So uh, we have a lot of uh, resources available in the, in the lab uh, so far. We have more than uh, 15 million uh, samples. Uh, that we uh, that are represented among uh, genomic libraries represented by different oops uh, different um, crops uh, including wheat barley uh, sunflower tomato and so on we we don't have a, a specific from india but perhaps we will have soon if we uh, establish some collaboration so we also provide uh, services uh, starting from the distribution of uh, of back loans, for example, uh, but also screening services and uh, developing some uh, new bag libraries in order to study specific uh, specific uh, genotypes or specific uh, plant species. And I will go into the detail in uh, by by giving you some illustration of projects that we have developing currently. So uh, just as an example, we uh, interact, in fact, with laboratories around the world. And uh, during the last three years, we have uh, distributed more than uh, 200 and a half million samples uh, around the, all the laboratories uh, in the world. So uh, we all know that uh, agriculture has to face, in fact, multiple challenges. We know that we have a global warming effect, uh, that the population is growing and uh, we have uh, some consumer expectation and uh, we need to, uh, to, to face these uh, challenges. And uh, in, this, uh, in this domain, the genomes exploration is, uh, could be one of the strategic approaches in order to better understand the plant evolution and the plant improvement and uh, adaptation. So what do we expect, in fact, from uh, genomics? So we start from, from the plant. The objective of genomic projects is to, to go to have a genes inventory, to localize those genes in, on the genome, uh, sometimes to sequence all the, the whole genome and to access to the, the function of the genes. And of course, the application are to uh, construct uh, new genotypes in order to produce also molecular markers and uh, identify candidate genes for QTL analysis or identify favorable alleles. So we have uh, various targets in order to, uh, to improve uh, crops, like the yield potential and yield stability, or the adaptation to climate changes, or durable resistance to biotic stress, but also perhaps a, a nutritional uh, compound, uh, like uh, Dr. Shapiro said also. So we have many uh, targets in order to improve uh, crops. But uh, to uh, assess uh, the uh, genome, we, 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 we have seen that uh, the genome exhibits a high level of diversity, and especially uh, for plants, we have a very uh, pro a big problem with uh, regarding the size of the genome of plants. 
compared to uh, animal, for example, uh, this, um, this diversity and this complexity is due to not only to the, the size of the genome, but also to uh, the, the content in terms of uh, repeated uh, elements. And uh, for some species, we also have to, uh, to face uh, the level of ploidy, polyploidy, that could be uh, a very high level of ploidy, polyploidy, like in wheat, where we have a uh, hexaploid, but also shulcane, which is even much more complex. So we know that uh, the availability of uh, genome sequence is really uh, important. And as an example, in this graph, we can see that uh, the number of QTL clones uh, for example, in rice, uh, since the draft genome uh, was, uh, sequence was published, compared to wheat, for example, uh, for wheat, uh, because, well, uh, we, we didn't have the, um, the, the talk for uh, the wheat genome project, but uh, the, uh, the, the sequencing is, is going on, and so we will perhaps have the, the sequence um, uh, available, and we already have some sequence on wheat. So we can expect to, to have a better uh, QTL clone uh, in, the, in the future. So um, in the next, in the past uh, years, we have uh, seen um, extraordinary uh, progress in terms of techniques and in terms of sequencing uh, technologies. Uh, this is very recent with the next generation technology, which uh, has been uh, developed in 2005, so not so far from now. And uh, we expect with a uh, also this, what we call the third generation uh, sequencing technology to have uh, even better uh, techniques uh, in order to have at least um, longer reads than what we have uh, so far. So thanks to all this uh, improvement in the technologies, uh, the complex plant genome sequencing project uh, has become possible. Uh, we can have uh, many billion of bases per day for hundreds of thousands of dollars per gigabase instead of what we had uh, some years ago, a million or billions of dollars uh, necessary for uh, per gigabase. But we have to, you have to be aware that, in fact, the novo assembly of plant genomes uh, remains and still remains challenging. And uh, Niels uh, illustrated perfectly this also. Uh, this is due to the size of the reads that uh, the techniques uh, so far uh, bring. But also, uh, regarding the complexity of the plant genomes, uh, genes family are difficult to assemble and they can collapse. Uh, also due to the repeat elements, and this is very difficult to assemble. And so what we, we have to, uh, to think is if we need or we don't need a high quality assemble genome and how to assemble the genome accurately. What we can conclude is that despite the progress that, we, that has been made, have been made during the last years, the next generation, with the next generation technologies, we still don't have enough reference plant genomes with high confident data. We have to know that even uh, in the databases, we have some uh, reconstruction of genomes that are not perhaps the reality. So with the third generation technology, we can at least uh, think that uh, things will become more um, relevant or accurate. But in fact, uh, we, we have to, to know that uh, this uh, sequencing remains really challenging. So basically, uh, the sequencing strategy uh, for complex genomes are representing between these two main strategies that uh, our, uh, Niels uh, said uh, previously, uh, which are the, the uh, strategy using the bike libraries, what we call the uh, high, uh, the high molecular DNA uh, fragment libraries or the world genome shotgun. Uh, for, with the bike by back approach, in fact, what we need is to construct these bike libraries and then establish a physical map. After that, you uh, select, in fact, what we call the minimum tiling pass and sequence all those back loans. Uh, this strategy was the first that we used for the first uh, sequencing uh, project. Uh, with the next generation technologies, the shotgun uh, approach has been um, more, more uh, down. But uh, with this technique, you, you have an overview, perhaps, of the, of the genome, but not a real a good assembly. Perhaps for small genome, it's uh, more efficient. But usually for uh, the new project, or the project uh, that are uh, for the barley or for the wheat, 
they use, in fact, a combination of these two strategies. What I want to show is that those bike libraries are still of interest, even with the uh, progress that has been made on, uh, on the next generation technologies. And so uh, these bike libraries can be the starting point for various scientific questions. In fact, we use those library for the genome sequencing project, but also for gene cloning or promoter analysis, for positional cloning, gene genetic mapping, chromosome working, in order to identify uh, genes from large insert clones and to characterize the disease locus. Of course, you can say that uh, there is some limitation with the bike libraries because of uh, specific technical demand in order to construct those libraries, and also a problem of storage because uh, when you start when you study a large genome, you you need to produce uh, thousands or millions uh, clones in order to study uh, those genomes. But this limitation can be overcome by uh, some, some, some projects that we have developed and some methods that we have developed, which are the low coverage bike libraries or the non graded bike libraries. And of course, if you work with specific center uh, experts in this uh, management, you can overcome this limitation. So in fact, what we have uh, developed in the lab is to use uh, bike libraries uh, specifically uh, depending on the project you are working on. So for a whole genome sequencing project, you will need a very high genome coverage of the bike library. But for most of the projects that you are developing, you just need a very low coverage genome uh, bike library. In, in fact, what people want to do is just to target a genomic region on specific uh, genotypes because you have a phenotype of interest, and so you have some genetic uh, data, and you just want to focus on this region in order to identify uh, which gene is responsible for the phenotype you are uh, studying. And as you can see on those graphs, with, even with a low coverage uh, bike library, you can reach a very high probability to find the region you are looking for. So with a low coverage genome uh, bike library, we can uh, study uh, very uh, different genotypes of interest in different species. The aim is to establish a physical map on a locus of interest or to fill some uh, residual gaps on a physical map uh, which has been obtained with classical bike libraries or to sequence a target zone, gene, um, zone or gene in uh, several different genotypes uh, or species in order to uh, perform some synthetic analysis. And with this approach, uh, it's possible to increase the coverage step by step if you don't find the region you are looking for, and to, uh, to use array libraries for small genomes or non-graded bike libraries for large genomes. So uh, the non-graded bike library is, in fact, a classical bike library, but we avoid, in fact, all the time and uh, money-consuming steps in order to rearray all the backgrounds but we directly focus on the pools of transformants that we obtain. We clone this large fragment DNA, and then we focus directly on the pools of the DNA. So to summarize this uh, strategy, you start, in fact, and usually you have some genetic data uh, on your species of uh, favorite species, or you have a physical map that has been established on a reference uh, genome, for example, and usually you have flunky markers on the region you are, you are studying. And so based on that, we, we construct a non-graded bike library from all the specific genotype uh, you want to, to study. We screen, in fact, the pool of transformants that we generate in order to identify positive backgrounds and to characterize then those backgrounds. Using, of course, the next generation sequencing technology, we um, previously used uh, the 454 technology, but uh, from one year now, we are using the PacBio uh, technology, and we obtain very good results, uh, meaning that only uh, we obtain each time one, one contig per back, or even when we pull uh, back loans, uh, like some MTP of backs, we always obtain one contig per uh, pools of backs. So I will show you uh, the kind of project that we are developing in collaboration with different partners uh, in order to show you how this uh, approach can be useful to develop your project. 
So this is a project targeting a genomic region of interest, which has been developed in collaboration with a laboratory uh, in Argentina with Maria Jose Diegues. Uh, the objective of this project was to establish a physical map uh, of the locus that confer resistance to Pichinia triticina. Uh, and uh, specifically in a wheat cultivar that was resistant to, uh, to Puccina. So uh, we started this project with some data. In fact, there was uh, some genetic data and uh, there, there were franking markers in the region which, were, uh, which was um, established of around 260 KB, so a very small region. Uh, the China Spring uh, reference genome of which were, was available because uh, this locus was uh, located on the 3B uh, chromosome, which was the first chromosome that uh, had been sequenced uh, in the Wheat Genome Project. So we construct, in fact, a non-greedy library from this specific genotype of wheat, which was called Simbalocho. And as an example, we just produce, in fact, a coverage of the genome around the 2.3x uh, genome coverage. And we have only 40, uh, 40, uh, 400 uh, samples to screen in all, instead of uh, more than uh, 1,000 uh, 1, and a half plates to, uh, to manage. Uh, located on this region, they, they had five markers. And so the idea was to uh, find backlone uh, spanning this region of interest and then sequence the backlone. So with this project, we were able to uh, isolate three backlones spanning this region of interest. We sequenced all these backlones. And uh, um, thanks to all these backlones, we were able to reduce, in fact, the uh, interval, uh, which was only about 71 KB. And uh, we uh, demonstrated that this uh, locus was smaller uh, in Cibalocho than in China Spring. So in fact, we uh, now uh, are, um, at least uh, the collaborators have identified some candidate genes, and, then, and they are currently uh, trying to uh, validate, in fact, uh, the possibility of uh, uh, candidate genes um, responsible for the, the phenotype. The, this project took only three months to, uh, to, be, um, to be achieved, in fact, so it's, it's no long. Sometimes we, we heard that uh, the, uh, it's easier to sequence uh, genome, but when you sequence, you don't have all the information. With this project, we were able to really have the, the high quality and high confidence data on the region we were foc focusing on. Another example that uh, to illustrate uh, this uh, approach uh, is, um, is a project that we have developed in collaboration with uh, Wolfgang Spielmeyer at uh, CSIRO in Australia. And uh, the objective of this project was to establish a physical map of the SR2 locus, uh, which is uh, responsible for stimulus re resistance. And uh, we use for that uh, specific uh, genotypes, uh, uh, cultivar, which is called uh, HOPE. So when we start uh, the project, when we started the project with uh, Wolfgang, uh, they already uh, tried to establish the physical map on this locus of interest. Uh, by uh, using a bike library uh, constructed uh, by the lab of Yaroslav de Lozel, who is able to um, isolate the chrom chromosome by chromosome sorting. And uh, he constructed a 3B uh, specific uh, OPE enriched bike library. But uh, when uh, they screened the library, which was a quite high coverage library with a 6X coverage, but they were not able to cover the entire locus and they were still some uh, gap in uh, the locus of interest, in interest. So if you don't have the, the whole uh, sequence of, uh, of the locus you are working on, you can uh, have all the possible candidate genes in the locus. So we started the project with them uh, by uh, constructing a non-gridded bike library. With this non-gridded bike library, uh, and with the fact that uh, there, there were troubles in uh, trying to obtain uh, an uh, the, the whole uh, box in the, in, the, in the region. We, we expect to have also difficulties in, uh, to clone these backlones. So with the non gridded bike library, we can increase the coverage of the bike library, and so we can produce uh, many backlones and many coverage uh, without uh, a lot of back, of back of samples to manage. So thanks to this approach, we were able to fill the gap, as you can see here in purple, and we were able to establish and to complete the physical map of this wheat uh, seamless resistant locus. Uh, 
we established uh, MTP uh, represented by 18 uh, backlogs that we, we sequence using uh, the 454 technology in this case. And in fact, uh, uh, we uh, observed that, uh, and that's why perhaps uh, it was difficult to obtain the, a very complete uh, physical map of this region, because it's really different in uh, HOPE than in Chinese pre, the reference genome. As you can see, the region is larger in HOPE compared to Chinese spring. And we have here a group of 10 genes, 10 genes uh, that are uh, present in OPE and not and absent in uh, Chinese spring. So uh, with this project, we were able to complete, in fact, the physical map of this uh, SR2 locus uh, to compare this, uh, this, this cultivar with the susceptible uh, Chinese spring. And uh, this revealed a major haplotype divergence and including with deletion and insertion even. So the, um, the SR2 uh, region diverged not only in gene content, but also uh, in presence and absence of, uh, gene, of cluster of uh, genes in this region. And this uh, event uh, has have already been uh, reported in other uh, wheat or in other cereals. And this points out the fact that even if you sequence uh, a whole genome or a whole genotype, you won't be able to, um, to isolate a specific region because we, you won't be able, if you have some insertion and duplication of large region, to uh, assemble correctly the region and to show that you have this insertion or deletion in the region you are, uh, you, you are focusing. So, uh, so far, the, um, uh, currently, the candidate genes are being evaluated for their capacity to confer the stimulus resistance, and this work has been published uh, last year. Uh, as another example, uh, which is more a wide um, study, we um, have developed this project in collaboration uh, with uh, Clemente Witt at IMRA uh, in France. And uh, the, uh, the aim of this project is to uh, analyze, in fact, the uh, trans transposable elements and diversity uh, between different, uh, different maize lines and using also this bioglobulary approach. So uh, perhaps, as you know, uh, maize is a diploid, diploid species uh, with a genome size of 2.3 uh, uh, gigabase. There are several uh, genetic maps available. There were several bioglobularies also available. Uh, one physical map uh, has been uh, established uh, in the, with the American B73 uh, in red line, and the reference genome uh, have, has been published by uh, Patch Nabol uh, in 2009. But um, maize exhibits a really uh, extraordinarily high levels of genetic diversity uh, in terms of uh, genome size, in terms of content of um, content and size of heterochromatic nodes, and in terms of repeat content. And this diversity is even more impressive at the sequence level, as you can see that uh, between two lines we can see one indel per 300 base pair or one steep per uh, 80 uh, base per. And uh, we, we, uh, whatever the, the lines you choose, you can have one SNP per 100 base pair. So with this diversity, it's very difficult to uh, show uh, at, at a very uh, small level the diversity between some region and another one. So we decided to analyze, in fact, the structural diversity between different maze lines, including some uh, European germ plasm. And so this, um, these are all the, the, the maze lines that we have um, put in our study in order to, to have um, a good representation of the geographic and genetic diversity of the, the maze. So we have constructed different maze bike library for all those uh, different genotypes. As you can see, we only use a very small coverage, genome coverage bike libraries. But even with a, a very low coverage of genome libra libraries, we were able to isolate backlogs in all the regions we are focusing on. And in this case, uh, I, illust I illustrated only a non-genic uh, region. So with this uh, study, in fact, uh, we were able to um, put a lot of um, uh, genotypes from uh, maize, which represent the maize diversity using specific markers of those genomic regions. We were able, after constructing the bioglobulary for each genotype, to screen and to identify backlogs 
of uh, the region we are studying. So uh, with the sequencing of all these backgrounds, we are now uh, analyzing the difference and the divergence between the non-genic and genic region. And I want to show you that uh, this uh, bike library approach is a really efficient and essen uh, essential tool in order to understand the organization and the function of a specific genomic region. So to summarize, in fact, what we, uh, the challenges, uh, especially for plant genomes, is that we have a very high complexity and very large diversity of uh, the plant genomes. What we have chosen is to reduce the complexity. So one approach is to isolate the, the, the chromosome. We have uh, chosen to specifically uh, cut uh, the genome to, by using uh, the bag library approach in order to reduce really the complexity of, uh, of uh, this genome and to be more accurate in the, in the region we are, we are studying. And by using uh, markers that usually all the, the scientists have because they, they work on a specific phenotypes, we can target a specific genomic region and we can study the diversity among uh, plants and uh, uh, among uh, different species, but also among different genotypes uh, uh, in the same species. Uh, this is the end of my talk. I just want to uh, give you perhaps a more basic uh, message. Uh, with genomics, we can uh, have, uh, we can expect to have a very, uh, very um, different approaches in order to study plant genomes. But we have to uh, think that we need, in fact, really complementary approach in order to uh, understand and decipher complex biological process and networks. So we need complementary specialists in biology, cell phy phy physiology, genetics, genomics, uh, and breeders, or, or of course. And uh, even I could have had that we need perhaps a, a, an economic view or a social view in order to better understand what we also have to do in terms of, of science. So I want to uh, thank you. I didn't put all the collaborators we are working on, but some of them. And uh, with the, uh, we are also involved in the International Wheat Genome Sequencing Consortium. And we also uh, work with uh, Neil Stein with uh, the International Barley Sequencing Consortium. And of course, our collaborator for the project I presented uh, today uh, with Clement Hidvig, Wolfgang Spimreyer, and Maria Jose Diges. And of course, I thank you, uh, my team that work on this project. Thank you very much. Uh, the talk is open for discussion. Uh, questions, please? Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Could you please identify yourself by name and affiliation? Thank you. My name is Monica Will from Igara Institute, Japan. Uh, my question or kind of discussion is how you are managing this big data issue. Do you have any strategy for this big data? Because you have been developing a lot of data, right? Uh, yes, the, 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 the big data, in fact, what, uh, the problem of genomics is to manage the big data, of course, okay? So um, we, in our case, in fact, we, have, we haven't such big data because we focus only on, uh, on the region, okay? So all, for all the other projects, in fact, we, we work with consortium and so uh, the people manage their data and their big data. Uh, for us, uh, we have, well, a lot of data, but just focusing on specific regions. So this is, in fact, uh, the specificity that we have. We just focus on regions that could be large region, but uh, it's not so huge data. So we, we manage them. We are able to do that. Yes. Ellen, thank you for your talk. And I, I should have acknowledged you stronger in, in my presentation, I know. Uh, because uh, CNSGV is very instrumental in helping us with storing the back libraries and rearraying the MTP. But I want to make another comment as well on the topic that you presented today, that people should really be aware of the amount of structural variation also, not only in the maize genome, but also in the yes. wheat and barley genome, and that the possibility of making these dedicated libraries to uncover this at target low size really a very important opportunity, and we experience this also in collaborations. Thank you for the advertising, Niels. <laughs> uh, any other question? If, if none, then let's thank Dr. Varghese for the thank nice you. presentation.